There's a lot of isekai anime that have been airing lately, some would say too many, but the one that's been particularly standout and found a place as a favourite for me has been that time I got reincarnated as a slime, a story with a pretty self-explanatory premise. Season 2 will be returning soon with its second core, so to celebrate, here's 5 things you need to know about that time I got reincarnated as a slime. People often think of adaptation as a simple process. You just do what it says in the book and you're done. But it's a constantly creative process that requires a lot of initiative. One of these situations was episode 1, the moment that the protagonist first turns into a slime. At first he doesn't have sight, but they couldn't just show a black screen or people would think their TV went bust. So they entrusted Yuji Haibara, a motion effects and 3D artist with creating a visual feast throughout the whole first episode that would show him getting his powers in an interesting way. He also created all the great sage sections, as well as directed the Slime Diaries spin-off series. It really shows the impact a single person can have. Episode 1 was also the time where they had to make some decisions about how Rimuru would move, but the designer was very deliberate in wanting people to be creative. He started out by drawing just a few designs for Rimuru, and then invited other animators to come up with their own ideas for how he should be able to move. So all of the silly shapes and exclamations he transforms into were ideas that the team had along the way. He's regarded as a fun character to animate, because there's really no right way to do so. That said, they had an issue with shot composition, and always had to find a way to get him on elevated ground to fit into the frame. By season 2, he just gets carried around a lot. When asked if he thought the series would be popular, the producer said that he was pretty sure of it. Slime has a unique appeal, in that it's about building up a city full of friendly monsters. The team notes that while other isekai are carried by their vassals, Slime instead has to rely on its plot beats, where they form new friendships and alliances. And the show was popular enough at the company, that from the creative staff to the business partners, they were able to form a crew that consisted entirely of Slime fans, whether that was through the web novel, light novel or manga. Because of this, everyone on staff wanted the show to be popular, and so an important part of this was in getting Bandai Namco Arts to greenlight two cores, an initial run of 24 episodes. A lot of series don't start out popular, but by giving it 6 months to build up an audience, they can find themselves in the limelight. In a way, it's a method of determining how well the producers expect the show to do. If it'll be airing for half a year, they're probably hoping for a hit. These are obviously harder to produce but according to the directors, while they did have some troubles meeting deadlines, there weren't too many difficulties. I mentioned that the slime team were fans of the source material, but the biggest fan was the character designer, Ryoma Ibata. He'd been reading the web novels on Naro, and the directors regarded him as the most knowledgeable person about the series. He's a well regarded character designer, but his specialty is in animating openings and endings for series, and so when he was approached with slime, he immediately asked to create the opening himself. This is a place where he can basically do what he wants, and create his own energetic slime sequence. For season 2, he created both the opening and the ending, giving him more chances to animate his favourite characters. Feel free to subscribe to find out more about the art and creation of Japanese pop culture.